Love changes everything. Unfortunately, there's not much to love here. I don't think I have ever been more uncomfortable watching a musical than I was watching Aspects of Love. This new production has rewritten a lot of the material and reworked the show a little bit, mainly to accommodate Michael Ball returning to the show in the older role of the Uncle George, but still being able to sing the big song that he sung 20, 30, however many years ago it was. I mean, the front of the program confirms that that is the reason that this is happening. As Nika Burns says, this new production of Aspects of Love was Michael Ball's idea. The role of Alex in Andrew Lloyd Webber's Aspects of Love had been a very special time. It was a big moment in his career, taking him from the West End via Top of the Pops to Broadway, and he loved singing and listening to Andrew Lloyd Webber's ravishing score every night. He had a light bulb moment. Why not revisit the show this time, playing the older part of George, Alex's uncle? And that side of this production? Sure, it works. Everything else? So what didn't work about Aspects of Love? Why has it had such a strange reception, getting everywhere from the range of one star to five star reviews? And where do I land within that range? Let's find out. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I do reviews, I do discussions, I do video essays, and if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me out and helps out the channel. But let's talk about what might be the most problematic show in the West End right now. I think almost all of Aspects of Love's problems, its main fundamental problems, come from the story because, oh my god, <laughs> Now, they have tried to retool and rewrite pieces of this story, and that is admirable when you remember what this story used to be, but still not enough has been done to make it palatable. And it still struggles to justify why it's getting a revival right now. Let me tell you the plot of this version of the musical, and you'll very quickly see why this show might have made me a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Aspects of Love is about Alex. He is just about 18, and he meets older actress Rose, who is somewhere between 35 to 40. They hook up, and they go to Alex's uncle's villa. Villa type for it looked like a villa. A house. A nice house. It's a very nice house. It looks pretty. Not expecting his uncle to visit. His uncle then visits. And very quickly, Rose and the uncle start to hook up as well. What forms is a love triangle of sorts between the three. With Rose struggling to pick between the two men that she loves. Both with an absolutely massive age gap. Now... That's the start. That is the basic storyline. From now on, to properly go into this musical, I'm going to have to dive into spoilers. I'm I'm just gonna have to fully let loose with the spoilers on this one, because I can't properly describe this musical's clear problems without just spoiling the entire thing. So if you desperately don't want spoilers, now's your chance to click off the video. Two years pass, and we then find ourselves... Two years pass, Rose marries George, and Alex is now 20. He goes back to visit his uncle, there's a scene where he randomly tries to shoot Rose, and it's just the weirdest thing I've ever seen, and eventually Rose and George get married. That is Act 1. For the most part, Act 1 left me with a face that was like this the entire time. But, I mean, despite the fact that you are only just of consenting age, it's not the worst. It's not the most uncomfortable. Act 2 is where we get the most uncomfortable. As we time skip 12 years, Alex is now much older and reconnects with his uncle, his ex-girlfriend who is now married to his uncle, and their daughter! Who is a child? We see her as a child. We start to see the cousins, because Alex and this child, remember, are cousins, start to build their family relationship. 
I am trying to portray this with the same sense of dread that I felt as we watched this musical progress. As then we skip about five years, as we see their child, Jenny, who the production tries their best to justify as 18, but the math ain't mathin, who now tries to hook up with her cousin, Alex, who by this point is about 40. And just throughout watching this, there is a sense of dread that is just felt in the deepest pit of your stomach. So much so that as I was writing my notes on this production, I literally had to write, please don't get together with your cousin. And my very next note underneath it was the words, oh no. <laughs> What's worse is that the musical had to rewrite it. She used to be 15. This relationship in previous versions was illegal. And even though you've made it slightly less illegal, it still feels illegal. And this production just makes you feel more uncomfortable because you see her as a child. You see Jenny as a child grow up. You see child Jenny and older Alex together interacting. So when it starts to try and form a relationship between the two, it just feels wrong. Now, theatre can be used to challenge people. Theatre can be used to make you feel uncomfortable. But I'm not sure if that's really the intention of these creatives. Are they really trying to make you feel uncomfortable? Are they trying to add commentary onto this? And if so, what's the commentary? I'm not even sure whether I meant to like these characters. From the way it's presented, it feels like I should. But none of them have very many likeable qualities. Without that, there's no alignment. There's, there's no commentary. I'm not sure what I'm meant to be feeling. But what I'm feeling is discomfort. What's more, this plot's tone is an absolute mess. It goes for these big dramatic moments with very little build up. The scene where Alex threatens Rose's life is one very key moment of this, where he just randomly pulls out a gun midway through a conversation and it feels very unearned. And because of this, it comes off as comedic. And then two minutes later, it's playing it as comedic and almost forgetting the fact that Alex literally shot someone. In Act 2, a very similar thing happens when we see the death of George. He walks in on Jenny and Alex kissing and has a heart attack and drops to the floor. And the immediate line afterwards from Alex is, this is my fault. And in that moment, this audience just burst out laughing. When a death scene accidentally leads to a laugh, you know you've lost your audience. This book fails, and there's no softer way to really say that, unfortunately. I really don't know what they could do to save this book. The characters are unlikable, the relationships are messy, it makes you feel so deeply uncomfortable. But then again, there are some moments of this show that really do lean into the idea of good because it's bad. Like, there are some moments in here that I was entertained, but mainly because I was just going, how did anyone approve this? It's very similar to films like The Room, where you watch it because it's so ridiculous, because it's so bad, that it's almost comical, it's laughable. I cannot say I didn't enjoy this musical, but was it good? Absolutely not. <laughs> Those are the fundamental problems with this production. Those are all the reasons why you look at this as a revival and go, why would you even consider reviving this? Because it's outdated, it feels wrong, and even the subtle touches to it to try and make it work in a mo to a modern day audience and, you know, not be illegal, don't work. That's the fundamental problem hanging over this show. But what about the other elements of this production? Let's talk about the music. This is a sung through musical, and most of it is kind of forgettable. It has that very sing-songy dialogue to it for most part, and a lot of the time that can end up you know, just having melodies that don't really land. When it does the more, like, musical theatre style of number and what you're more expecting from, like, an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical, it does work, and it does have some good songs, including Love Changes Everything. I honestly do really enjoy these new orchestrations. The music sounds beautiful. If you enjoy an Andrew Lloyd Webber score, this music's going to really work for you. But the lyrics, they leave a little bit to be desired. I would say for the most part, this score is 
pretty forgettable, but love changes everything still works. It's great as expected, and Michael Ball performs it brilliantly, but this number comes about midway through Act 1, and once it's already out of the way, there's nothing to really hide behind anymore. It comes so early that the flaws of this musical feel more impactful because it has nothing to hide behind. That nostalgia that some people feel for this song is gone because it's already happened. On the whole, it's a fine score. It's not the worst thing. Will I ever listen to it again? Probably not. But there are a few highlights here and there and it would be wrong not to say that. Another thing I really enjoyed were some elements of the design of the production. This production uses a lot of these stunning hand-painted backdrops that feel so French. And the artistry is amazing. They are absolutely gorgeous. However, the staging of the show undermines it completely. This musical jumps from one location to another to another to another, especially within the start of Act 1, very quickly. So you don't really have the time to appreciate each little bit. And the method that they use to go between these different scenes and these set pieces is a little bit tacky. They use this main screen that kind of swipes and moves along the front of the stage and has a projection shot on it. These projections are stock images. It feels like they literally just went onto a website and kind of grabbed the first things they saw. And when you contrast these really weird projections with these beautiful backdrops, it lessens the impact of how beautiful that is. And because we're switching with so many locations, and I, I will give the show credit, these do happen very slickly, and there are some fun methods for this, but I don't know, I wish we spent some more time in one location or didn't have to jump consistently. So while there is a lot to love about this design, there are some very questionable choices as well, which leads to me being a little bit more mixed on the whole design element of the show. Finally, let's talk about this cast. I'm actually going to start with the ensemble. This is the most underused ensemble in the entirety of the West End right now. They are in like two scenes and it's an absolute shame. You're almost wondering why the production has even spent the money to cast this many people in the show if you're not even going to use them. They play little roles here and there, but this could very easily be a six, seven person show. Especially when only a couple of the lead cast members really stand out. Let's talk about the whole reason this is happening. The man of the hour, Michael Ball. Who? Yeah, he does a good job. Yeah. I'm impressed. Love Changes Everything is a key highlight of the show. It's well sung, it's beautiful. I think it works with the new context of having George sing it instead. Yeah, yeah. Laura Pitt Pulford is really strong in the show, but Laura Pitt Pulford is strong in every show that she's in. The thing that I find that doesn't really work, and this is it's less on Pulford and more on the script itself, is that I don't really know her intentions. I really struggled in the show to know what Rose really wanted. Did she want George? Did she secretly want Alex? Was she garnered by her own motivations? Did she love neither of them? Did she love both of them? I didn't really get that. But I don't think the script gave a clear answer to that either. But Paulford's vocals and the overall performance are really, really strong. Jamie Boggio. I preferred him in Act 1, when he's playing the younger version of Alex. He has this wide-eyed nature about him, and it does really work. It worked less so in Act 2, where they spray some grey hair dye into his hair and give him a fake beard, and he's 30, but you don't really believe he's 30. And the character of Alex is given some really bad pieces of dialogue. There's a lot of moments of wooden delivery, but... I feel like even the strongest actors in the world would struggle to not deliver this dialogue any other way. It would probably still feel wooden. And then there's Danielle Denise, who is so underused in this production. She only gets a couple of moments, and in these, she does really shine and prove herself. But again, I want to see more of her. It's a very small role. This cast are really let down by the material of the show. I'm not aligned with any of them, and I can't really engage with any of them. I lose almost all of their intentions and what they really want, and I don't really get any of them. When you are reviving a musical, 
There is one key question that you should ask yourself. Why are you reviving this now? I don't think there is a good reason to revive Aspects of Love. It's a musical that should have just been left to be forgotten about and to have one or two songs of the show pulled out in concerts, maybe. It's outdated, it's problematic, it's completely uninspired and it feels so wrong. If you were going to bring this back, it needed a top to bottom overhaul, almost completely. But this production doesn't really do that. And because of that, it can't run away from its problems of the original production. The key reason for this production existing right now is to see Michael Ball sing this song again. But I can't help but think there were better ways for us to have that. Maybe a Love Changes Everything tour that Michael Ball could do, or even just give him the lyric and give him a one-person show. I'm sure Michael Ball fans would absolutely love that. Or even a, a one-off concert of this show. You can get away with these type of things and these outdated materials, and even put on shows that are a little bit more problematic, a little bit more divisive, if you do it in a concert format. Where you're mainly focusing on the music of the musical, and less so on the aspects of this production that don't really work. <laughs> aspects, get it? <laughs> I've softened on it a little bit. Because originally I was like, this is a one star production. Like the second I walked out, I was like, this is one star, this is... But there are some things to love here. There's elements of the design I love. I still enjoy pieces of Andrew Lloyd Webber's music. Michael Ball's performance of Love Changes Everything is great. And these actors, despite the limitations, do the best that they can do. So if I was going to say where I would place it, it's a two star production. Just about. Yeah, like, clutching onto two stars and losing grip. But this is a production, as I said, that had a wide range of scores and really proves that theatre is what? Subjective! So, what do you think? Did you enjoy Aspects of Love? What did you enjoy about it? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe, it really helps me out and helps out the channel. There's some links to my other videos on screen right now, and a link to my Instagram if you want to drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today, and I hope you see you next time. Bye!